are shining our spotlight on tenancy deposit protection all this week with our TDP partner, TDS. And joining me again is Ben Beadle. And Ben, I thought for this uh, video we could talk a little bit about some of the issues that crop up for landlords with regards to um, TDP. And let's talk about disputes because um, I would imagine that you see the same things kind of cropping up time and time again. Do you see any trends? We do. It's cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. So cleaning. <laughs> so present in typically 60% of all, the, all of the cases that we get. Mm -hmm. So for, for landlords it's about being prepared for that, mm -hmm. making sure that the property property is presented in a really clean condition, mm -hmm. having your inventory, keeping your invoices, keeping audit trails mm -hmm. uh, and managing the tenancy in an effective way with your tenant to, to mitigate the, the chance of uh, the property being handed back mm -hmm. in a dirty condition. Mm -hmm. And anything else? Um, aside from cleaning, we're looking at damages, uh, damage caused to the property, redecoration, uh, rent arrears is present in uh, approximately 20% of, of all cases, so reasonably reasonably high, but they, they tend to be the main ones. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, we've got sort of gardening issues and, and so forth, but really it's cleaning and damages that, uh, that keep us busy. So would you recommend that at the end of the tenancy, the landlord recommends to the tenant that they do their own clean first, and then the landlord goes in, just checks that they're happy with it, and maybe they won't have to organise some professional cleaning? Well, I think certainly we want to be in a position where we're preventing disputes. So anything that the landlord can do that's going to encourage the tenant to get a full deposit refund yeah. is not only good for the tenant, but it's good for the landlord. It means the, the, the property is not empty for a great period of time. It means an easy life at the end of the tenancy and the money can go back. So, mm -hmm. so firstly and foremost, that's that's the goal. So, mm -hmm. if the landlord can go round a couple of weeks before the tenancy is ended, mm -hmm. uh, is ending, um, inspect the property, point out any obvious defects to the tenant, and really help them mm -hmm. uh, hand the property back in a, in a good condition, mm -hmm. uh, that's got to be a better way for everybody. No, absolutely, very good advice there. Um, another issue that crops up is the distinction between wear and tear and damage. And you know, the landlord might have one view and the tenant might have another. How do you do, how do landlords deal with that? It's often a difficult point to accept because landlords need to remember that if there is damage caused at the end of the tenancy, the they can't be in a better position than if the damage didn't occur. So if we have um, I don't know, staining to the carpet and so forth, it doesn't automatically mean that the landlord is going to get a brand new carpet. Mm. All they're going to get is a contribution towards uh, uh, that carpet, assuming that the, the, the staining isn't so bad. Obviously, if it's completely wrecked and damaged, um, there will be a greater contribution, but our adjudicators and therefore the landlords uh, need to adopt the same process will take into account wear and tear. Uh, and wear and tear is about the reasonable use of the property and it looks at things like the length of the tenancy, the quality of the items that are left behind, the nature of the tenancy as well. So if you've got lots of children running around, mm -hmm. um, your barometer for fair wear and tear needs to be raised mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if those wear and tear issues are too much for you, be more selective about the tenants that you take. Mm -hmm. um, because if you've got a single chap on his own versus two or three sharers, you're obviously going to get a lot less wear and tear than mm -hmm. you would with three or four people. Mm -hmm. So these are all of the types of things that come into the mix when the adjudicator is considering the case. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it's, it's prudent for the landlord to adopt that type of approach when they are discussing uh, the return of the deposit with their tenants because they must take into account fair wear and tear. Mm, absolutely. And actually, I was thinking of, of the issue of pets as well. If a tenant wants to have a pet, would you recommend that the landlord takes a slightly bigger deposit um, to cover any pet damage? Um, and would you also recommend that um, the landlord advises the tenants to be very specific about cleaning up any kind of pet issues because you know mm. pet fur can cause allergies and things like that so it, it, at both ends really there's got to be a bit of extra detail hasn't but, there? There has and that's that's fairly common to take a slightly enhanced deposit for animals being kept in in the property. Um, uh, we'd also recommend that steps are taken to be really clear about what the circumstances are for keeping those animals in the property so if it is uh, a cat is it cleaning uh, carpets, curtains and so forth. Mm -hmm. Is it upstairs? Is it downstairs? Is it the whole property? Mm -hmm. What's the expectation? Mm -hmm. And that can be put in the tenancy agreement as a, uh, a specially negotiated clause so mm -hmm. that everybody's 
super duper clear yep. about what uh, the expectation expectation is for the end of the tenancy. Absolutely, and um, I guess a good good one to finish on really is you know we very much uh, hear of landlords reporting that tenants withhold um, uh, the the last month's rent and tell the landlord to take it out of the deposit. That's a big no no, isn't it? Yes, I mean it is a no no, um, but the reality is that it happens. So the expectation is that the tenancy agreement is fulfilled and the the rent is paid on time in accordance with that agreement. But mm. you and I both live in the real world where unfortunately we sometimes get arrears that take place. So if that, if that, if that happens, the landlord is best uh, advised to work a bit harder to try and get uh, the rent out of the tenants. But if it's not forthcoming, make sure that they get in writing that the rent can be used um, or can be deducted from the deposit so that the landlord isn't at a loss. Mm. Ideally, the rent and the deposit will be dealt with quite separately, mm. uh, but often they become quite um, combined mm. at the end of the tenancy. So, mm. so really it's the landlord's call. The tenancy agreement will specify you can't use the uh, deposit for rent um, uh, for a general payment, but obviously if there are arrears owing, that's the only option. Mm. Um, I mean, but surely that would be an issue if the rent was used up as the last month's rent payment, sorry, the deposit was used as the last month's rent payment and then they're turned out to be damaged to the property. Um, ha what would happen in that instance? Well, in, 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 in that instance, I don't think the landlord would necessarily routinely accept that the rent is to come from the deposit. It is just a consequence that crystallises at the end of the tenancy. So right. effectively what's going to happen is the landlord is going to crystallise what his complete claim will be mm -hmm. um, seek to use the deposit for that and anything that's over and above the deposit amount is for either the tenant to top up or for the landlord to pursue uh, through the courts if mm. it's if it's worthwhile to mm. do so mm. and you you the good best bit of advice i hear you often give is for landlords to think like an adjudicator so really again right at the start of the tenancy belts and braces everything done uh, in the correct manner to the letter of the law and then these problems won't come down the pipe to bite later, will Absolutely. they? Absolutely. I think we have to be really clear that disputes are won and lost at the beginning of the tenancy yeah. and in some instances before the tenancy's even started. Uh, once you get to the end of the tenancy, it's too late to fix anything, whether mm -hmm. it's the tenancy agreement, an inventory or audit trails or whatever. So start as you mean to go on, set the tenancy up correctly, do your inventory, do your tenancy agreement, register the deposit in time um, and hopefully with good communications between the tenant you won't need the dispute resolution service. Absolutely. Well, I do hope you're enjoying this celebration of 10 years of TDP in England and Wales. And stay tuned to more from Tenancy Deposit Protection Week here on Property Tribes, powered by TDS. <laughs>